waiting a long time for this <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the bride and groom, family and friends, and fellow freeloaders. <laughs> for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ollie, one of Philip's oldest and longest serving friends, and it's my honour and privilege to be stood up here today giving a speech as one of his best men. I must admit, I do feel slightly on trial today. Because Phil told me that if I do a good job here, I can be best man at his next wedding. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Any speech about Phil wouldn't be complete without a few anecdotes. And knowing, him, knowing him as we all do, he's probably told you them all about it. <laughs> The best man is supposed to sing the group's praises and tell you all about his many good points. Well, I'm very sorry to say, I can't sing and I won't lie. <laughs> Let me turn the clock back 30 years so we can take a look on what has made Phil the man he is today. As everybody found out, Philip Proctor Colder, <laughs> born on the 16th of May 1986. I tried to link this to some of the major world events. It seems that nothing else really made you happen. <laughs> Although the Fazakli Hospital staff still refer to it as Ugly Wednesday. <laughs> Phil and I first met over 20 years ago on the playground of the Mount Prep School in Crosby. Unfortunately, Phil was a slow starter at school. At nursery, he was different from all the other five year olds. He was 11. <laughs> By the time we reached secondary school, it became clear that Phil was a keen and talented sportsman. This did not go unnoticed by the PE staff, but his football skills were recognised as he was named Sabutio Player of the Year. <laughs> Since leaving school, Phil has gone on to prove that size really does not matter. <laughs> and is now a competent golfer, an even better hockey player, but most importantly of all, a devoted father to Benjamin. <laughs> After graduating from Liverpool University, Philip is now successfully building his career as a mechanical design engineer. He's been described as the most knowledgeable, respected and influential in his field. And who am I to disagree with Paula? <laughs> <laughs> All joking aside, Phil has always been a true and loyal friend for over two decades. He's always been there for me and the rest of the boys whenever we've needed him. And I know I can call on him in my hour of need, or to be more precise, when the pool lose. <laughs> Before his fairy tale began with Katie, he wasn't always so lucky in love. Phil has asked me to specifically refrain from mentioning any past girlfriend. And sadly, this has cut the speech short by a good three seconds. <laughs> Day, and I respect his wishes. <laughs> Having only recently got married myself, I wanted to share with you, Phil, six bits of wisdom about marriage I also found on the internet. <laughs> Number one, never go to bed on an argument. Always stay up and argue. <laughs> Number two, best way to remember your anniversary, forget it once. <laughs> Number three, always remember three little words. You're right, darling. <laughs> Number four, in times of trouble, always remember the phrase from Oscar Wilde, women are meant to be loved, not understood. <laughs> Number five, all of the couples here today, please now all turn to face each other and stare deeply and lovingly into each other's eyes. Now, statistically speaking, you are staring at the person who is most likely to murder you. <laughs> Always get on with your mother-in-law. I haven't spoken to mine for about 18 months. Not because I don't like her, I just don't like to interrupt her. <laughs> I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's here for sharing it in Katie and Phil's special day. And I've also got some messages to read from people who couldn't be here but wanted to pass on their best wishes. To Philip, we're sorry we couldn't make your special day, but it felt too emotional losing such a special guy as yourself. We'll see you again soon from all the girls at the Fantasy Palace.
<laughs> Let me say how lucky you are, Phil. You will leave here today having gained a wife who is warm, loving, caring, a wife that is funny and radiates beauty wherever she goes. And Katie, how lucky you are that you're leaving here today having gained a gorgeous dress and a lovely bouquet. <laughs> Phil, you've done many stupid things in your time, but by far the smartest thing you have ever done is marrying Katie. But just before I propose a toast to the bride and groom, I'd like to leave you all with a thought. That marriage is not about finding someone you can live with, it's about finding someone you can't live without. And in this case, these two really have married the right person. May love be in every step you take, in every word you speak, and in, and in every choice you make in your lives together. I'm sure that you'll all agree that they make a fantastic couple and we wish them all the best in the future. Please all be upstanding and cheer up your glasses to the new Mr. and Mrs. Coleman. Mr. And Mrs. Coleman.